and dudes named Aaron and Jared Who had advice on racing and they wanted to share it Started a website where players go to see all their picks The goal was make the fans some money and to cut down the risk They put the plan into motion and at first it seemed silly Make a website where the expert picks are freer than Willie From a racetrack veteran to just a beginner There's one place that you want to go to find you a winner As a matter of fact, I want to hit the exacta There's only one site that you'll keep coming back to So next time that the horses all line up at the post Make sure you use the website that'll win you the most Whether Churchill, Oakland, Goldstream Parks, and Matoga And all tracks in between, there's only one site to go to When it comes to your racing needs and all of your bets Plus it's got a catchy name that no one ever forgets RacingDudes.com for all of your needs RacingDudes.com for all of your leads RacingDudes.com for all of your bets RacingDudes.com as good as it gets RacingDudes.com for all of your needs RacingDudes.com for all of your leads RacingDudes.com for all of your bets RacingDudes.com as good as it gets What is up, everybody? Welcome to a very, very special edition of Blinkers Off. What is so special about today? It is the 2021 Fantasy League Draft. We have a whole slew of yahoos on hold right now waiting to come in here and, and waiting to get this draft going. It's one of my favorite podcasts of the year. Now, you may be watching and saying, hey, why is he by himself? Where is his trusty partner, Jared Welch? Well, if you listened to the show last week, Jared got a lot of nice gifts, right? A lot of nice gifts. He got a U-Porn subscription. He got Tinder Gold for a year, and I, he, about, he about lost his mind when he got it. Nobody's heard from Jared since. We, we don't know where Jared's at. I got one email from Jared in a week, and it was his list of horses for tonight. He also sent some rather weird pictures of uh, girls that he had met. So, uh, I'm not going to publish the pictures. I am going to show you his list throughout the night. So don't worry. Jared's going to be taken care of. Uh, listen, if, if you know Jared, if you know his address, send him some fluids maybe. I, I think he might need them. So, uh, But without further ado, we're not going to waste a lot of time because we've got a ton of guys in here right now. We've got guys just dying to make their draft picks. So I'm not going to waste any time. We're not going to do the best thing you saw today, anything like that. We're going to get right to the draft. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Let's get ready to rumble. There it is. If, you can, if you're not fired up now, whoops, where did I go? There I am. Okay, so if you're not fired up now, I don't know when you're ever going to be fired up. Magic totally threw me off already. That's that's Magic's fault. So, okay, real quick, I'm not going to waste a lot of time. We'll, we'll post the rules. We'll post the points, uh, the system, how everything works. Uh, tonight is the draft night. We've got 10 teams, uh, and we're each going to draft uh, five horses for each team. So what happens, it's a snake style draft. So for example, John and Ryan have the first pick tonight. So they will go first and then they will go last in the second round. And so that'll just so on and so forth through five rounds. So uh, pretty easy to follow along. I, to me, this is a really, really important uh, night because you're gonna get the top 50 horses according to all these experts. Well, a few experts and a few maybe not. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But you're going to get a good idea of the top 50 horses. I think that's really important this year because I told these guys off air before we started, man, like the first eight or nine, I feel pretty good about as far as ranking. The rest of them, wow, what a crapshoot. So a lot of these horses, maybe you've never heard of. Some of these are going to be horses that hadn't even started yet. I don't know if we'll get an unnamed horse. We'll, we'll, we'll find out that when Real Dynasty picks. Last year, they picked an unnamed horse. But Anyway, without further ado, Magic's ready. My, my assistant, uh, he's going to be working the controls. The number one pick in the draft goes to John and Ryan. We're going to bring them in. The wait is over. Number one pick in the draft. Let's see what they do. All right. Welcome in, Ryan Stillman and John White. Guys. Number one pick in the draft. One second. What are we doing? Point on the 
podcast recently that uh, whoever would have the number one pick, it would be a tough decision between two horses, life is good and essential quality. And Jared made the point that whoever was second well, actually might be sitting in a better spot because they didn't have to make the decision between the two. And Jared made a very, very good point when he, when he raised that, because that's the truth. As Ryan and I have debated this back and forth, uh, two very good choices to pick between. And uh, we even had the luxury here with the number one pick, though. If something were to have gone wrong from the time that the draft positions were, were uh, picked, to now, in other words, if either life is good or essential quality, it was reported that either one of them had a problem or a setback, and we all know in racing that can happen on from minute to minute. Uh, we were in the position that we would still have one of those two horses, but both horses have lasted, and we've made our decision. So with the number one pick in the 2021 draft, the Ryan John team takes Life is good. Oh, well, there you have it, guys. Life is good. Uh, you can't, you can barely see the background if you're watching, but that is a picture of life is good. Uh, we kind of guessed that that would be the pick. Uh, I, I know for John, it's got to be very tough to go against the Central Quality, who he loved at the Breeders' Cup. Uh, you know, he, he, he picked him over Jackie's Warrior. He loves how Brad Cox is talking up this source. Uh, John uh, has kind of had some technical difficulties, but he's on the phone with Ryan. So that's why you're hearing John's voice, but you're not seeing him. Um, so just real quick, uh, John, if you can hear me or Ryan, if, if you can't, if you can relay the question, just how tough was it to go against essential quality after you loved him there at the Breeders' Cup? extremely tough as i say ryan and i actually kicked this back and forth ever since we knew we had the number one pick and as i say uh you know you really i don't think can go wrong with either one of these in terms of the draft essential quality is obviously the more it's one around two turns he's a, a grade one winner he's a breeder's cup winner he's going to be an eclipse award winner but life is good has that raw talent that we see from it's like an American feral, like a justified life, not authentic, like a gamine. So when you get a Bob Affer trainee with that really had shown a lot in the morning before his first race, but then went out in the afternoon and did it, uh, our feeling is that uh, that's the direction to go. And certainly we're not alone because in the Churchill Downs Kentucky Derby Future Wager Pool One, it was life is good, the five to one favorite of individual horses, while essential quality, the Breeders' Cup winner, was eight to one. That's a pretty good gap. It wasn't even like five to one, six to one. It was five to one, eight to one. So, you know, life is good. Though uh, he's got to prove himself uh, beyond the maiden race. He's got to prove himself around two turns. But uh, certainly, we just feel excited about what uh, he might do. It looks like the sky is the limit. And really, when you get down to it, you've got a trainer, Brad Cox, who's had a tremendous year, has built a, a powerful operation, but he has zero Kentucky Derby wins. Bob Baffert has six Kentucky Derby wins. That's another reason that the Ryan John team has opted to go with Life is Good. Yeah, you can't argue with any of those points at all. I would have went with life is good as well. So I, I'm with you guys 100%. All right, I'm gonna guys, I'm gonna take you off here, and you're, you pick again at 20. So we'll see you guys in what three hours from now. So uh, we're, we're gonna go ahead and move along now to the second pick in the draft. Uh, Dan and Michael, Michael, a new player uh, this year, we're, we're lucky to have him aboard. Here we go, second pick. I love these videos. All right, so Michael is joining us from the Michael and Dan team. All right, Michael Myers, you're going to make history. This is your first kind of uh, pick here. I think it's an easy one, but uh, yeah. go ahead, tell us who you're picking. Yeah, our decision was made for us already, so we're going essential quality. Yeah, I, you know, there's really not a whole lot to add here, in my opinion, and I'll let you add something for sure, but the deal is there were two horses that stood out uh, this year. Uh, whether that is the case on, you know, first Saturday in May or not, right? I mean, essential quality is easily the pick here. 
Yeah, uh, you know, I'm a little worried. Uh, two-year-old champ uh, hasn't done much recently, uh, but, you know, it's hard to go against him at this point, and uh, I'm hoping to tap it a uh, horse is bound to win the Derby at some point. You certainly would think. I mean, that horse has done everything as a sire, but uh, that one eludes him, but, yeah, I, I'm with you. And, you know, John uh, made a good point about, you know, Brad Cox has won zero, Bob Baffert six, but, but you know, Baffert has, has a lot more experience trying to win the Derby uh, than Brad Cox. So, all right, Michael, we'll, we'll hit you back a little bit later. Congratulations. You've done it. You've made <laughs> your first fancy league pick. So thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks. All right. So let's just move right along. The, the uh, third pick is uh, Real Dynasty. And last year, Real Dynasty had the 10. Uh, and, and that's obviously a pretty tough spot. And then uh, they made fantasy league history not picking an unraced horse, picking a horse that didn't even have a name. So uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, we, we've given them a lot of crap, but here they are, man. They're back. Vinny is with us. So here we go. Third pick. All right. So we'll bring Vinny in right now. Vinny, good to see you this evening. You've got the third pick. Take it away. And Vinny's on mute, so let's unmute him. Okay, Vinny, start over. You were on mute there. Oh, there we go. Sorry <laughs> about that. Um, yeah, this was tough. Uh, I mean, figured the top two would go one, uh, two. Excuse me for a second here, Vinny. Uh, got a trade proposal for you if you're interested. Uh oh. All right, let, uh -oh. let's hear it. Let's hear it. Hey, I'm gonna bring in my partner here, Mike let's Samich. We have let's a trade proposal. What's up, Vinny? How's it going? Good, man. Good. How are you? I'm doing good. I just got off the horn here. I think we want to want to try and make something happen. All right, I'll, I'll, let's hear it. Well, uh, I heard there was a lot of interest in the horse that's going to go after Life is Good and Essential Quality. And I'll be honest, Mike and I, we really want that horse. And we want to prevent you from doing something dumb and trading it to the wrong team. So we're prepared <laughs> to offer you. We switch our first and fifth round picks. So we'll pick the four of you in those two. In exchange, you get our third round pick and we get your fourth round pick. So you just have to move back one. You get an extra pick in the third round, fourth round. Who cares? It'll probably be someone unnamed that you didn't want anyway. <laughs> and then we switch again in the fifth round. And then that way, everything falls into place. What do you think? Sounds good. Sounds good. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going we're gonna to have to pause because the commissioner <laughs> has no idea what just happened. Answer one question first before we go on with this. <laughs> it's an equal number of picks, right? Yes. Correct. Okay, so you're just going to have to tell me who's drafting where. The, immediately, I know this. You're getting yeah. the third pick. Flip three yes. and four. Okay, so Magic Mike will get the three, and Real Dynasty will get the four, correct? Ma Magic's just going at it. I love it. Look at this. It's like you have a producer or something. Well, I, I got to keep track as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> Call the screenshot, my friend. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, Does that make sense for you? Okay, yeah, I'll look at it. Sure, I have plenty of time to look at the graph that, that this big while I've got 30 people wanting to get in. And so, yeah, okay. So for the immediate future, though, we know that Magic Mike is the third pick. All right, guys, I mean, I didn't see this coming, so take it away. Well, uh, Mike, we knew that we wanted a Todd Pletcher horse who looked pretty damn good when he debuted. Do you want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the third overall pick, Prime Factor? Yeah, I would love to. I mean, to be honest, when we went into this, we felt like this was actually a three horse, three top three horses that we were interested in. So, uh, yeah, life is good and essential quality are great. But we thought Prime Factor was a clear third pick here. And we wanted to make sure that we ended up with this horse. There's not a ton of horses that we thought were guaranteed point getters and horses that were going to go down the derby trail that could sustain the long run. And Prime Factor was one of the few. Plus, it's completely on brand for us to get a horse with Factor in the name. And since the Factor is probably never going to sire a derby horse, we might as well get the fake Factor horse. In the in the first round of the draft, Ma Magic, Magic muted. muted, so that's good. The producer doing well. I didn't well. say Magic it any better away. myself twice. Once muted and once not. <laughs> yeah, he, he blew away the field in a six for a long debut at Gulfstream Park. Pletcher is obviously a, a trainer who's got done well on the Triple Crown Trail. Uh, he had a little bit of an off year last year. Hopefully, we can get back and uh, kind of get to get a couple of couple winners in the winner's circle. And we're guaranteed points with this horse moving forward, and that's what we're excited about. No, I mean, that makes sense. I, I definitely think he was going to be a top uh, five pick. So, yeah, I, I, I'm with you guys. Uh, it's interesting that you thought you had to trade up. So I guess Real Dynasty liked him, too. So uh, Magic, put yourself off. 
Maybe someone Wait. else liked him who we didn't completely trust to trade within the rules because he maybe didn't have the draft stock that we did and maybe wanted that horse as bad as we did. And we wanted to make sure everything was on the up and up here. I, I don't really know what that means. So go ahead and take yourselves out. I guess Real Dynasty now has the number four pick. So I'll play this for you again just real quick here, Vinny. You're back. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yesterday was a fun day, Aaron. I got uh, I got multiple texts about the number three spot. Um, and Magic uh, Magic sent me Magic sent that offer over. I uh, and to be honest, I, me and Nick both thought that taking Prime Factor at three was a little too risky, especially after how we drafted last year. So we didn't actually want him, but there were a couple teams behind uh, behind Magic that attempted to trade up for him, and Magic giving us his basically just swapping his third and fourth round picks and gave me the assurance that he would not take our pick with the third overall pick. So that that helped. Um, Nick and I are going to with the fourth pick take uh, keep me in mind the uh, the K- Kentucky Jockey Club winner all right so keep me in mind gonna go number four i'm with you i I like this horse as well uh i thought he would be about a top five six pick uh you know i'm not i'm not gonna hate on that uh, on him being number four at all there um i kind of have the outlook that this is a a horse that is definitely going to make the gate because he's going to hit the board at a lot of a lot of big races just real quick uh as far as him winning some of these bigger races uh, do you think he's got? I mean, obviously you do. So, kind of touch on why you think he's gonna gonna win some of these big ones. I like, like you said. I think he's just, like he's gonna make the gate, and he seems like one of those horses that I like. He just seems like he's always gonna run consistent. In some some races, it probably is gonna be good enough. In some races, it's not. We love his pedigree. Um, Lauban has been a very good sire. His damn sire's victory gallop. He's got that long stride in the stretch. So, like, we don't think he's going to throw up a dud. So as long as he stays healthy, we're confident he's just going to kind of get us points. Maybe he'll win some of the early preps. I think he'd have to improve definitely to compete with a horse, like horses like Essential Quality or Life is Good. But, you know, if he comes in second and third every time, it's just going to keep getting us points. We felt like it was a safe pick after last year. Our first round pick didn't actually get us any points all the way number 10. So we're hoping he can at least get us some points this year. No, I like it. I think it's a good pick. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you on him. I, I don't know. Jared hated him for some reason, and I was like, ah, I thought you looked pretty good. So, all right, Vinny. Uh, well, I have no idea when you're drafting again, but we'll see you soon. Um, all right, so now the defending champion of the league, myself. Uh, I'm ready for the fifth pick, and I'm going to get a lot of people making fun of me for who I'm about to pick, but uh, the pick is in. All right, everybody knows it. I am a sucker for Remington Park. I am a sucker for the Springboard Mile. I am not leaving here tonight without Senor Buscador. He's my boy. Senor Buscador for me at five. Here's uh, two reasons why. Number one, I think he's freaking legit. I had him number three on my list. Uh, So if I was drafting third, Senor Buscador would have been the pick. A lot of people are going to hold Remington Park against him. And that race was was kind of trash, the Springboard Mile this year. There's no doubt about it. Go back and look how he won the race. It was effortless. It was just a stroll in the park for Senior Bruce Goodor. He's got a great pedigree. He's got a pedigree that's going to go long. I hate him out of the gate. That's the one thing he's got to work on. And so that has me a little bit nervous. So hopefully he can get a little bit better out of the gate. Listen, I didn't think he was going to be around in the second round. I didn't want to leave tonight without Senior Buscador. That's my pick. Senior Buscador, make fun of me all you want. I don't care. So, all right, we move on to pick number six. We go from the top to the bottom. Evil, Stevel, and Austin finished last last year. They actually finished in the negatives. Listen, comeback season. Austin says it's comeback season. The number six pick, I believe we're going to bring Evil Stevel in to make the pick. Here we go. (music) 
There he is, the legendary Evil Stevel. Evil, how you doing? I'm doing all right. How's it going? It's going great. I love the shirt, man. You're looking good. Blinkers off and chill, baby. It's going to be probably better a better look than what I'll be wearing at uh, Oakland when we get together next time based off of our last place finish uh, this past year. This is true. I'm going to make you wear something pretty funny. I'm not going to tell you yet because we got to make sure we got fans at Oakland. But either Rebel, Arkansas Derby, I got something planned for you. But don't worry, I won't be too bad. I won't be like Jared, make you wear like a purple suit or something like that. So, all right, Evil, sixth pick. It's redeeming season. Who you got? All right. We were kind of debating going back and forth here, but uh, we're going to go with another Baffert horse and classier. Classier. This one, uh, obviously you get Baffert as the trainer, um, but he's got some pretty good connections there as well uh, with SF Racing, Madiket Stables, and Starlight. So you got some good connections there uh, out of Empire Maker. So uh, we'll see if he can uh, get us some points, and maybe we'll see him at uh, Oakland. Yeah, I think it's I think it's good. I mean, you got to get as many Bafferts as you can on your team. So I definitely get it. And yeah, let's you know, he's going to send somebody to Oakland. Might as well be classier. Right. So. All right, steve I got you down. Comeback season, man. I'm rooting for you. You know, I'm rooting for you. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So we'll move on here from evil steve And we're going to bring in another new member uh, this year. He's added a, or added to a team. Uh, so Brandon Bauer's got a new Teammate, Brian Brush, we met this guy at the Breeders' Cup in, uh, what year was that? That's been a long time, 2019 at Santa Anita. Really good guy, really excited, knows his stuff. He's a Cleveland Browns fan, baby. That's why, that's the main reason why he's here. So number seven pick, he's going to come in and make it. There he is. All right, Brian, what's up, man? Sorry, I thought we were talking about Browns football tonight. <laughs> You, you totally can for a second. If I, you don't, don't. I, I don't think we need to say anything about that. Um, <laughs> and and I, I have to say, Brandon and I are a little irritated because we think that the killer bees plus Bob Baffert would have equaled victory this year. So so Spielberg was yanked out from under us. Um, and we're going to have to go with the Judmont Farms homebred Mandaloon as our pick in the first round. All right, Mandaloon, and I got to tell you something. Uh, Jared picks next. He really, really wanted that horse, so he's going to be majorly upset when he hears about that. That makes me kind of happy. So we, we had a little, yeah, we had a little Judmont Farms intel, and uh, they, they are really, really high on this horse. So we're we're not unhappy, but Spielberg was a great pick before us. Yeah, Mandaloon, I I, I definitely think. Uh, yeah, I definitely think he, he's got a really high ceiling. And again, you got the Brad Cox angles. So Mandaloon got you. Thank you, Brandon. Or Brandon, Brian, th I, thinking about your partner. Thank you, Brian. And you've made history just like Michael Myers. You've made a pick in the draft. Let's move on. It's Jared's turn. Jared's not going to be happy, but at the same time, he's getting a decent horse. So here we go. And you see right there, Jared wrote in and said, this is bullshit. I knew he would be very upset uh, with this one. But, Jared, you know, I've got your list right here in front of me, and you're getting the number three ranked horse on your list. So with the eighth pick, Jared is going to take highly motivated from the Chad Brown barn. Uh, listen, really nice stakes winner last time out at Keeneland. Uh, won by four and a half links on uh, Breeders' Cup Friday, I believe it was. So, I think the sky's the limit for, for highly motivated. I, I don't think there's any reason to be upset. So with the eighth pick, Jared is taking highly motivated. So we'll go ahead and cross him off the list, and we'll move on to pick number nine, one of my favorite guys ever. Why? Because he bought me a beer, and that's all you got to do. That's the way to my heart. Evil Steve will knows that as well. He's in the background laughing. So uh, Paul Freebeers, we're getting ready to bring you on. Yeah, I, I've discovered that uh, free beers are really the key to life. Uh, so if you, if you take care of people with free beers, good things happen to you. It's karma, I guess. That's exactly right. I mean, that's the only reason you're here, Paul. It wasn't your, it wasn't your dashing personality, right? It was exactly. the free beers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul, number nine pick, who you got? You know, this is where it uh, really gets tough. Um, you know, watching all those horses uh, go, uh, go in front, really hoping one of those uh, slipped down to me. So, you know, my choice is to to take a, a wild card or 
grab a horse that I know Slim is going to pick with either the 10th or the 11th pick. So they're on my team. You know, I have some uh, uh, some trade fodder if he's uh, willing to uh, to come up and play. But I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Brooklyn Strong. All right, Brooklyn Strong. Yeah, that's that's got to be Slim Source. I mean, he's got to be upset right here. We're going to have him on in just a second. So we'll see if he's not too angry about that. I definitely thought Brooklyn Strong would be Slim's. So, Paul, we're going to take you off there. We'll see you in just a minute because you're going to draft again in uh, the 12th spot. But right now, we're bringing in a man who needs no introduction, Saratoga Slim. We've got him for the 10th and the 11th pick. He's ready. What yeah. up, what up? So all my people out there, all my racing dudes, I got my daily double shirt on, straight from Old Smoke. Yo, go and check that out on the Old Smoke website, the Racing Dudes Collection. All right, this is the advertisement, and they better know that I set them up with those Old Smoke folk back in the day. So, yo, a lot of good picks right here. A lot of good picks. Brooklyn Strong was in my top 11. I got the top – I got 10 and 11 here. So I'll tell you what. There's only three horses that are – not four horses out of my top 11 that are still left. So this is going to be tough for me. Uh, but at the 10th pick, I'm going to make a pick. I heard Real Dynasty. Vinny was on some podcasts with some other people. And he loves this horse. So don't go on a podcast before the draft and tell us who you like if you're going to start playing against us. That's a full move. So I'm going to pick the Bill Ma Trainee. Beautiful pedigree on this horse for Godolphin. His name is Speaker's Corner. Son of Street Sense out of a Bernardini mare. He took down a horse that I'm going to pick next. He took this horse down, and this horse came back. So as the 11th pick, I'm going to play the class from these races. This is the classiest races that I saw. I watched a lot of replays the last couple of days. These are the classiest races I saw out of all of them. Cadeau River. Yep. Speaker's Corner took him down, but then Cadeau River came back. And he's the 11th pick for Brad Cox. He came back with a 104 Equibase speed figure and won by nine and a half lengths at Churchill and just blew the doors off this field. So I'm going to go with Speaker's Corner and Cadeau River as my 10th and 11th pick. Slim, I got to tell you, I love it. I absolutely love those two picks. Uh, Cadeau River was really high on my list and Speaker's Corner wasn't that far behind. So yeah, you've, you've, I thought Cadeau River might slip to the second round to me. So I think it's two good picks, man. And uh, listen, I hate that we had to wait so long to have you on. So <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> All, right. All right, man. We'll, we'll knock you off for now. I know you will be back. Thank you, Slim, so much. Like I said, we're not going to be missing Paul for too long. Paul's back. 12th pick. Here we go. All right, Paul, he stole one of, or you stole one of his horses. The question is, did he steal somebody you wanted here? You know, he he had uh, two really good picks that I knew would not uh, make it uh, back to me in rounds uh, three or four. Uh, but actually the horse that I debated uh, whether to take uh, at nine is still there. So, you know, if you're if you're going to draft this year, you're either going to get uh, a Bob Baffert or a Brad Cox, and and Brad uh, Cox had a horse that just exploded over the weekend, so I'm going to take uh, Prate at 12. Prate, yeah, I think that's a good pick, and you're right. He did uh, exploding is is definitely the word I would use. He really, really looked good. Uh, you know, one turn race. Let's see, maybe you know that's a big question mark on him, but uh, good pick, definitely a good pick. And uh, so now I guess we'll just go right on, on to Jared uh, with the 13th pick. We're, we're back at Jared already. And uh, let's play the music. So Jared, to me, he's got to be sitting there pretty happy because he got the third uh, ranked horse on his list. And the sixth ranked horse on his list is sitting right there waiting for him. Hot Rod Charlie, the runner-up in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, is going to go to Jared. So Jared gets Hot Rod Charlie. So, uh, boy, uh, he's he's riding those the, those Keeneland Breeders' Cup or undercard races with Highly Motivated and Hot Rod Charlie. So I will go ahead and scratch Hot Rod Charlie off the list. That was one I kind of was thinking might fall to me. Instead, it falls to Jared. 
hey, for not showing up and who knows what he's doing right now, doing pretty good for himself. So I don't feel too bad for him. All right, Jared's done. We're going to go back now to the killer bees. We've got Brandon this time. So we'll see if Brandon, uh, let's, let's just hope he doesn't screw this up. There he is. Yeah. What is up? I don't know if I can screw it up too much. Uh, I'm more known for screwing up my first round pick. Uh, the last two years with Coliseum and Dennis's moment, I don't think I can do much worse than that. Um, so I'm definitely glad that Brian took that first round pick here. I am going to go for a horse that both of us, uh, when we were talking today, we both really liked a lot. Uh, and I think that we were both surprised that we both liked it so much. Um, and that is the uh, second place finisher in the Los Al Futurity, the great one. Wow. Now, this this one shocks me. So explain why you like him, um, you know, over some of these other ones. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a few on there that we were pretty into, uh, but both of us thought that this was a pretty good effort. Um, obviously, he's still a maiden, which is a little bit concerning to both of us. But he's put in some good efforts, uh, and he lost to the horse that was both of our favorites. Uh, and he, it was, it was a good race. He put up a good effort, and we really think that uh, into the new year he'll get some opportunities to run in some big races, and that he'll put up some points, uh, and that he's going to be in there in a lot of those uh, West Coast races. Yeah, and you know the West Coast horses, it's not the deepest crop uh, as well. So the only negative, of course, he's still a maiden, but in in the biggest race he's been in, he almost won, and and really a, a bad head bob where he would have uh, would have won the thing. So all right, it could be a sneaky pick. Uh, the great one, I I know uh, it it's the horse's name to be pretty good, right? After Wayne Gretzky, so can't go wrong with that. All right, Brandon, we'll see you in a little bit. Let's go now to the fifteen pick. Um, so. Evil, you're in the waiting room, but I, I thought it was Austin's turn to pick. So I guess we're going to bring Evil back on because he's our only option here. All right, All right. Evil, still here. So, hey, um, you know, we picked a Bob Baffert horse in the first round. Um, we're going to go back to back, and we're going to take the winner of the Low Sal and, and go with Spielberg. There it is. So Classier and Spielberg, Bob Baffert duo. You guys are like, look, we're not messing around this year. We're not taking stupid King Guillermo. We're not We're not worried about these loser trainers. We're going Baffert, Baffert, right? And Baffert, we trust. <laughs> All right. I love it, man. Okay. Baffert, Baffert for the uh, last place finishers last year, trying to get back on top. All right, Stevel. Now it's on to me. So let's first of all, let's uh, let's see Spielberg. Where did I have him ranked? Oh, like 80th. So no big deal. So all right. So back to me with my pick. Here we go. All right. So Saratoga Slim was really the one that made me mad because I, I kind of thought I was going to get Cadeau River. I really did. And if not him, I, I definitely thought Speaker's Corner didn't get either one. Um, this is a class pick for me more than anything else. I know it is very questionable that this horse uh, can get the two turns, but I, I am going to go with Jackie's warrior here. Um, I still think even if, even if he's not great, let's say at a mile 16, mile and eighth, he's still going to be good enough to, to win those, some of those lower class races. They can get him some decent spots. I have confidence that Asmussen will get him spotted right and look, this horse had a huge hide going into the Breeders' Cup, disappointed, still ran decent enough. So, uh, you know, Jackie's Warrior for me, I, I, I still think there's enough talent there to make him worthwhile. So I'm going to go Jackie's Warrior with the 16th pick. Listen, I'm getting ready to bring in Magic and Mike. I don't know which one's coming in. Who knows what is going to happen? Last time we saw these guys, all kinds of craziness. Here we go. I'll be honest, Aaron, I forgot how much I missed some of these people in this league. I mean, uh, I'm with you. Slim had some great picks there. Uh, if you're looking for horses that are currently hurt, not in training and sitting on the IR, man, Cato, I'll be honest, Cattle River was going to be our first round pick until I found out he was hurt. So I'm glad Slim took that off the table for me uh, to be able to do things. Listen, I, I know everybody likes seeing Mike's face better. Let's be honest. He's the better looking of the two duo, but 
he also has a daughter and it's story time. So uh, he trusted me to figure this one out. And boy, this is usually when things go off the rails in our draft. So uh, with the second round pick, we're going to reach and we're going to take easy time. This is a Mark Cassie trainee by Not This Time, who we've seen be a really awesome sire so far. Uh, he's going to be uh, targeting either a first level allowance or the Mucho Macho Man, which isn't part of the Fantasy League actual points, but uh, is a good springboard for him. But uh, I, we really like this horse's family. We really like that he's by not this time. It's been a very successful sire for Mike and I so far with our betting. So we're going with easy time. So that's the first horse not in my top 50 that's been drafted. So congratulations. Glad we could do that. <laughs> so congratulations. I'll definitely have to search him and see what I missed. Uh, yeah. Easy time, uh, you know. That's uh, that's that's no. I was I was gonna make a joke about Mrs. Magic, but <laughs> make all the like jokes you want about much. me. But them's fighting words right there. <laughs> I like her too much. I didn't do it. I stopped myself. So, Magic, thanks so much for coming in, and thanks for producing the show. Very little airs tonight. You're doing well. Uh, happy to help. I'll see you in about five or six rounds when our next pick comes in. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. So we're going to go back to the real dynasty group here. We're going to bring Vinny in and we're going to see what happens. All right, Vinny. Vinny's had trouble with the mute today. Give it your and mute, Yeah, it mute. I keep forgetting the head on mute. Uh, a lot of horses went that I thought would, uh, would drop past the second round. So kind of surprised, but uh, I will, we will be taking uh the Shug McGahee trainee uh, 10 for 10 with our second round pick. He's right. got a case case of the seconds, but hopefully, hopefully he can get over that in his three-year-old year. You know, I, again, I don't think it's a bad pick. It's just he was very frustrating last time out. Oh, 100, 100%, but he seems like a horse. Shug doesn't get too met. Like Shug usually only has one or two horses pointed on the on the trail ever. So, you know, this, I feel like I, like we know this horse is most likely going to be running in preps. So kind of going for that strategy this year, rather than trying to reach for going with horses that we, we think that will be running, running in those preps early rather than, oh, well, they need to win an allowance race first and then they'll be back in the stakes company. So he's been running in stakes company. So we're hoping his first start as a three-year-old is in a, in a stakes race. I mean, that's absolutely the strategy I like to use on this night too. So again, I can't, I can't, you know, argue with either one of your picks. I argue that you traded with the Magic Mike show. I mean, that's just that's I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was too good of an offer. <laughs> I'm just giving you shit. I, I listen. I think it was a good offer too. So, and you made history. This is the first trade on draft night, I think, ever. So you are. You know what? Since you've joined the league. You guys are just history makers. Uh, that's so. what we. That's what we do. Hopefully, hopefully, one year we can we can actually win it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be that would be definitely historic. So, all right, Vinny, thank you for that. Uh, I like your strategy so far. All right, so we're back to Dan and Michael Myers. So I'm looking in the waiting room, and I don't see Michael Myers. <laughs> oh, there he is. Okay, he's there. All right, I'll go ahead and play the music. <laughs> All right, there he is. All right, Michael, what do you say? Yeah. All right, so uh, if Dan likes a Baffert horse, I'm not going to argue with him. So we're going to go with Editor-in-Chief. All right, Editor-in-Chief for Bob Baffert. Uh, this horse debuted, finished second, correct, uh, in his debut? Yes, yes, yeah. behind Purnell, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm guessing breeding, pedigree, go long, that's probably the big reason. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, I like you because I can get you on, you get your pick, couple of words, concise, done. I love that. I'm a to the point person, so. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, man. We'll, we'll see you here in uh, just a bit. Listen, uh, John and Ryan, if you guys don't remember, they are playing in this game. We haven't seen them in a few hours. So it's all the way back to them. They're going to go back to back with the 20th and the 21st pick. I'm going to play the song and then they can make their two picks. All right, boys. Oh, let me just say uh, congratulations, Senior uh, Aaron, for uh, snapping up Jackie's Warrior because, yes, there are questions about his two turns and so forth, but. To get him at 16, Aaron, I thought 
was very good. So that's a good compliment to your uh, springboard mile winner. So uh, the defending champion to me, Senior Aaron, is off to a good start. For the 20th pick, the Ryan John team is going to the Todd Pletcher barn with a Union Rags colt, and his name is Arham, A-R-H-A-M. And he was a nice maiden winner first time out at Goldstream, 91 buyer speed figure. So uh, like the way he drew off in the stretch that day. And with Todd Butcher, you know you're going to get every chance to uh, run in the big dances. At 21, the Ryan John team will go back to the Todd Fletcher barn, and we will take a horse called Mutas, Mutasabek, or whatever it is, however you say it, M-U-T-A-S-A-A-B-E-Q, who won the uh, bourbon and then ran in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. So uh, he's going back to the dirt for Pletcher, and uh, so we'll try to string along with this Pletcher trainee, too. Of course, uh, the sire has not produced much. This is a son of into mischief, so hopefully we can get some kind of uh, produ- production from a horse that's by this sire into mischief. <laughs> of course, authentic winning the Kentucky Derby last year is what John is referring to. Here's something really cool, John. Uh, last year, I took authentic at number 21 in this draft, uh, a son of in the mischief who won the Kentucky Derby. So that's kind of cool that you're doing it here at 21 this year. It's uh, serendipity, I hope. <laughs> now, listen, John, as much as I love the commentary, I want to hear from Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, you've had three picks. What do you think? Are you feeling good? You know what? In John White, you trust. I know everyone else here did their research, but like, let's face it. If John White says we're going with it, we're going with it. And that's how we're rolling today. <laughs> that's how we did it. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it, man. I, I, I love the John and Ryan team. They're my favorite team. They're, they're who I root for if it's not me. So, um, all right, guys. Uh, we'll see you back here in another few hours. So thank you very much for that. All right. I said we would go back to Dan and Michael Myers. We got Michael coming. Here we go. All right, Mr. Concise, what do you got? Uh, actually, I get a little bit more out of me on this one. Okay. We are going with Team Merchant, who beat the brakes off of 10 for 10 and Speaker's Corner by Nyquist, Doug O'Neill trained, who also trained Nyquist, and same ownership group. Yeah, I, I had that horse down uh, as, as, a, as a fringe third, fourth round pick. I think that's a good one. And really, I, I can't really add any more. I think the reasons you, you laid out are good. And, and, and you know, I, I'll, I'll ask you, since you're on here, we're really to the point in the draft now where you're just trying to take stabs at horses that you think have plenty of upside. So that's kind of probably what you're thinking here. Yeah, I mean, he debuted at six furlongs and then ran six furlongs again and haven't seen from him. I actually – emailed Doug O'Neill and he did not respond to me. So he's on my shit list. But <laughs> other than that, uh, we're just hoping uh, he matures as a three-year-old. All right. And if he doesn't, we'll blame Doug. And uh, that's, that, that exactly. sounds good to me. <laughs> All exactly. right. All right. So Real Dynasty, listen, they've, they've, I feel like they've changed up their strategies from last year. I mean, they're drafting horses that have names. So that's good. All right. So we're going to bring Vinny back in. Uh, uh, he's going to pick uh, number 23. <laughs> Uh, again, I hate that it automatically mutes me. Um, I get 23 and 24. Thanks to magic. Oh, that's uh, right. Yes. I see that yeah. on the board now. So we're going to have you in here for two picks. Yeah. Um, with 23, we are going to go with the, uh, Bill Mott trainee, uh, Olympiad. Okay. So Olympiad, what, what do you like about him? Uh, I, he beat, I, I was a big fan of Cato river as well. And he beat Cato river to break his maiden, uh, last time out. He just worked out for the first time, uh, in a couple months, uh, the, what yesterday, I believe. Mm-hmm. So seems like, uh, Bill's getting him back into, uh, in the racing shape. So hopefully we'll see him like he will be on the trail. I think that's what kind of hurt us last year is we took shots with horses that were on the bench and they just never came back off the bench. So trying to go with horses who are actively doing things rather than sitting in a barn waiting. Um, So that is our 
that is number 23 for us. Um, okay. 24? And 24 for us. I'm going to go... I think this might be a, a stretch here, but I'm going to go with a horse named Ethical Judgment, trained by Brandon Walsh. Oh, it's a honor code sire horse. Uh, I liked how he looked last time out. He hasn't done much since. He hasn't worked in a, a little over a month, but uh, good connections. So hoping that this is this is Walsh's horse this year that he's going to try to put on the on the Derby Trail. All right, ethical judgment. I will be honest; that's not one I had in my top fifty, but that's really meaningless this year. You know, with just so many out there, like I just said, with the one win, and you're just hoping. That they right. Get up. I had I had considered ethical judgment, just didn't make the top fifty. So, all right, Olympiad ethical judgment. Um, listen, I don't even know when you draft again. Is it like the last round now? Uh, yeah, 40, 44. Okay, 44. Okay, well, I'll so see I'm on you. the shelf for a bit. Okay, so yeah, don't fall asleep <laughs> waiting. So. Uh, all right. Thank you, Vinny. All right. Uh, pick 25. Boy, it's back to me. I'm going to have to really, gosh, I'm between two horses. Uh, let's play the music. Yeah, really between two here. Um, I am going to take a shot. At the recent maiden breaker Parnelli. I'm going to take Parmelli here at 25. Uh, this is a horse I had in my top 15. Uh, so I, I, I guess to get that horse at 25, uh, you know, that's value. So uh, hard not to take him. I'm between him and one other one here, um, or really two other ones. So we'll see maybe if one or two of those come around. Probably not. But I'm going to go with Parnelli with the 25th pick. All right, we're going to go. Oh, we're halfway done. So now we're going to go to Evil and Austin again for pick number 26. All right, Evil. All right. We're going to be consistent tonight, Aaron. <laughs> Another Bob Baffert. Freedom Fighter. Freedom. Connections with Madiket Stables and Starlight and SF. Um, and a son of violence. So, um, yeah. Uh, like I said, Bob Baffert, we trust. Yeah. So the third Bob Baffert of the night, Freedom Fighter. Wow, you guys are crazy. He can win up three of them. I love it. I love it. Um, listen, I think Jared's going to be mad. He had that horse ranked eighth overall in, on his list. And I thought, man, he's going to get three out of his top ten without even being here. So I'm glad you brought you blocked that. So Freedom Fighter to Evil and Austin. And what do you know, another Bob Baffert. They've got three now. So, all right, we will kick it now. Back to Brian. Brandon uh, made the last pick for the Killer Bees. Now we're going to go to Brian. All right, here we go, Brian. All right, so we're going to have to go with our second favorite, Clarovich Brown horse. Uh, so we will be going with reinvestment risk. All right, reinvestment risk at 27. This horse, uh, really classy horse, right? Been in a lot of big races. Uh, so I'm guessing this is more of a class play than anything, right? Yes. We're, we're getting a little thin at this point. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. We're, we're, uh, we're getting down to the bottom of the barrel. Uh, he's, he's, he's a good horse. So we'll see what happens with him. I think it's a good pick. All right. So 27 reinvestment risk. Now we're going to go to Jared and this is where, uh, Jared's, he gets a little bit shaky as well. Uh, now I'm huge magic. What's happened? So Jared goes with the number 28 pick. This is where his, like I said, he's getting a little shaky. He's going to go with a first time starter working out in South Florida right now with the 28th pick. Jared is going to go with a horse named Ghazali. Uh, it's G-H-A-Z-A-A-L-Y, Ghazali. Um, and I'll add that back to the stream here. Um, I would talk about this horse a little bit. I don't know a lot about him. Uh, I, he was not on my top 50. So, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I would just be making up something if I was talking about it, but Ghazali working out in South Florida, Jared gets him at 28. So there's that. We'll go back to Paul for the 29th pick. All 
I don't know if it's a, a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, I think I'm going to follow um, uh, the uh, Baffert train here and, and take a Baffert horse. He's projected to start uh, right after the new year. So I'm going to take uh, M- Medina Spirit. Medina Spirit. Yeah, that's that's definitely one uh, that had been talked about a little bit uh, in, in kind of the inner circles. I, I'd seen a little bit on him. Uh, tell us what you like about Medina Spirit. Well, one is his trainer. Yes. Sure. <laughs> um, and, and the other thing is, you know, if, if he races uh, in the sham, which is he's supposed to, uh, and finishes second to life is good, you still get 10 points. So, um, you know, uh, sign us up for that. Uh, it, it's about uh, collecting points. Uh, you know, Vinny talked about it when he took uh, Keep uh, Me in Mind in the first round. It's about collecting points throughout uh, the entire process. And uh, and hopefully you, you you hit big on on a few of them so you can uh, take home the, the uh, crown like you did last year. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's a good pick. So Medina Spirit at 29 for Paul Paul. Like I said last time, we'll see you back here in a couple seconds. But let's bring in Saratoga Slim. I got my two boys. I'm playing the double-double, man. The daily double right here. I got Baffert and I got Chad. I got them in the palm of my hands. These are the two Eclipse Award winners. Three-time Eclipse Award winner. Two-time, oh shit, he's all over the place. <laughs> oh, there he is. Two-time triple crown winner. I'm gonna take with the 30th pick, Saville Row for Bob Baffert. Nice winner. Quality road out of a Malibu Moon Mare. One on the view at Del Mar. Had a nice speed figure. Hasn't got back on the work tab. I got a lot of horses not on the work tab, which scares me. And I've always done that year to year. I've always taken horses that are working out. This year I'm not doing that. I'm hoping these horses come back. So Seville Row, and at number 31, another Claravich horse that looked beautiful at nine furlongs. And I love a Chad Brown horse that likes nine furlongs at Aqueduct. I picked Country Grammar last year, and he won me the Peter Pan. And I got a horse called Risk Taking, and I like that horse a lot. So Chad Brown, Baffert, boom. I love it. And listen, the bobbleheads made it. I mean, I, I, I I'm so glad you brought the bobbleheads on. That was great. <laughs> love it. I love All right, it. man. So we're going to head back to Paul. Paul, I hope you have some bobbleheads. If not, don't even bother coming on. Yeah, I'm sure. Th- I'm sure the uh, people uh, watching would much rather us uh, throw it back to Slim. Uh, and, and let him just take the picks for the rest of the day. But uh, um, you're the dictator, so you make the call. <laughs> I'll let you on. Just, just just to get the draft over with, I'll let you on. Because I think if we had Slim, we might be here tomorrow night still with the with picks. So I'll let you back on, Paul. Well, the positive thing is if you did that, I would imagine there'd still be people uh, tuning in. So True. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna take a, a, a swing here. Uh, so a few years ago, a, a uh, horse for Baffert um, hadn't ran at this time. Uh, was uh, training at the Los Al. Got the big call to Santa Anita. Um, I was uh, fortunate enough to watch uh, his allowance win. He went on to win a Triple Crown. So we are uh, going to take a Triple Crown brother uh, here at this pick with uh, Triple Tap. All right, and uh, I I don't think I need to ask you anymore. You're going pedigree here. Triple ta- Triple Tap. And just hoping the lightning strikes twice, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. So triple tap to Paul at 32. It's back to the tender man. It's back to the you porn man. Jared with a 33rd pick. If he was here right now, who knows? Who knows? He, he, I don't know. I mean, the guy has to be dehydrated by this time. Please send Gatorade if you know Jared's address. 33. We'll see who he picks. <laughs> All right, Jared had a first-time starter um, yeah, la- with the last pick. So here he's going to go with one that's that's had a couple of starts under his belt. Uh, he had this work- horse ranked number 16. So I think, again, he's going to be pretty happy to get Dungal Bay, a Todd Pletcher horse who won at Gulfstream Park going long last time out. 
Uh, it's a horse that I, I definitely had on my list as well. Definitely a horse that I was uh, looking to maybe draft in this round or the fourth or the, excuse me, the fifth round. So Dungal Bay for Jared, uh, again, for, for doing whatever that guy's doing, he's, he's not making out too bad on this draft. So Dungal Bay at 33, we're going back to the killer bees. We got Brandon coming up next. What is up? So we are going to go with something a little bit different here. Uh, we aren't loving uh, a ton of the horses that are in the States right now, but there is a horse that we do love that ran recently in Japan that was running for Godolphin. That is absolutely fantastic. The race was beautiful. He made it look easy. And we were super excited about this. We thought he might fall to the fifth round, but we've gotten a little bit thin on our picks here. So we're going to take him now, take what we like, take a big, long shot. And we are going to go with Lemon Pop with our pick in the fourth. So I got to ask, when has that ever worked? Never. No, it <laughs> never has. But this year is the year. <laughs> it's got to work once, right? So... <laughs> Listen, like I said, though, after after about the top nine, ten, you're, you're taking shots. And, hey, if he gets over here, you never know. You also can earn a little bit of points on those Japan races. So I get it. I'm not going to hate on it too much. But just when has it ever worked? I don't know. But lemon pop for the killer bees. Go ahead. What we do like about this one is lots of times the connections, you've never really heard of them. The horse is kind of a no name. This horse has pretty good connections. And uh it, we, we just thought that this one might be a little bit different than some of the others. Maybe not. Maybe we're dumping him and claiming something else real soon, but we'll see. <laughs> well, we'll see. Hey, knowing you, you'll, you'll get a few points, and then you'll just hold on to all five and not finish <laughs> off. And I loved it. I thought it was a great strategy. So It, it worked. It did. It, that's exactly right. And for somebody it didn't work for is Evil Stevel. He's going to be here next with pick number 35. <laughs> All right, Aaron, we were contemplating maybe going to another Baffert. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the hell of it. But we're going to spread things around and go East Coast this time uh, with Todd Pletcher. We are going to go with another violence cult, um, Prisoner. Uh, Mike Rapoli owned, uh, had IRAD riding last time, so seems like some good connections, and uh, we'll go with Prisoner. All right, prisoner. Yeah, I, I I had that one on my list as well. Trying to try to work that horse in. Was hoping for maybe a, a fifth round pick, but you guys sneak up and get him. Yeah, nice looking horse for Poli owned, and and that's definitely one that you're always going to look for uh, in the ownership. So prisoner at 35. You guys got one more pick. I get to see you one more time. Maybe you can pick a fourth Baffert. We'll find out soon. So 36. It's back to me. Um, man. You know, I I have a horse. This horse I have, I'm going to look him up so I can make sure I know because it's like, how is he still available at 36? So as I look him up, let's play the music. All right. With the 36th pick, I am going to go back to the Steve Asmussen barn uh, and, and take a horse that a lot of people I think is maybe or have maybe forgotten about a little bit. Uh, this horse kind of reminds me a bit of Little Menace, although I think he might be a little better. His name is Whiskey Double. And so Whiskey Double was a maiden breaker at Churchill Downs on debut way back in the summer and then never saw him again. But the good news on a horse like that, you go to fairgrounds, several steady works. Uh, so he's getting close to a race. I like that. Uh, I would not be surprised to see him pop up here pretty soon in a race. So whiskey double at 36 for me. Uh, only worry is maybe he's a, a little bit sprinty. Uh, and if that's the case, you know, I'll probably just hold on to him and try to collect five point races. Uh, but whiskey double at 36 for me. I, I hate to do it, but the magic mic shows next. Oh, it's better. It's Samich. Great. Good. Well, Samich. Okay. Magic. <laughs> I'm back from reading children's books to make a nice little pick in this draft. And before I do that, I've got to say, I'm disappointed that people are mispronouncing a sire. 
okay? The sire's name is violence. Violence. <laughs> so you make sure moving forward, we include that little whisper there. So anytime you draft a violence horse, violence. You got to include the whisper just for, for giggles. Yeah. So anyway, uh, with the 37th overall pick in the draft, we're going to go to another Gulfstream horse, Chess's Dream, out of the Mike Maker Barn. This is a Florida bred that we think is going to be able to score some points for us down in Florida. Uh, was an impressive winner um, in debut, beating Triple Jeopardy, uh, which was a, a horse that I read was aboard that was a, a, a touted horse coming out. So we're hoping that the Maker Barn can get us some things going here. He's been wonderful training over the last year or so. We're hoping to keep that going here, and Chess's Dream can score some points. All right, so you also have the 38th pick, so are you responsible for making that one as well? I am so sorry, you guys. Uh, there's a lot no. of... I live in Los Angeles, if you didn't know, so there's a lot of crime happening out there. So uh, it, it turns out that uh, Batman, the real Batman, doesn't actually arrive until he's scheduled to arrive May 3rd. So we have to wait until Batman gets here uh, to fix that. But I'll go real quick, and then we can get here, because I don't want you to, like gunfire to come through the windows here. Um, <laughs> with the 38th pick, uh, the Magic Mike team, we're taking what we're not, regular guy. We're taking a good old regular guy out of the Wayne Catalano barn. And listen, that last race, the buyer came back pretty slow. The time was pretty slow, but Wayne Catalano can get a horse to keep running and running and running, even when it probably shouldn't. And when you're in the fourth round, you just got to kind of muck up for some points here. So uh, that's where we're going here with the 38th pick, regular guy for Wayne Catalano. So real quick, he, Wayne Catalano, I, I like him as a trainer, but who, like who... Who has he kept going, running, running, and running in the past? Well, nobody who's been on the Derby Trail, which is why we waited for the fourth round pick to take the regular guy. <laughs> I, I, I like Wayne Catalano fine, but there's that reasoning was like, I, I'm trying to rack my brain. Who's he had on this trail? I will, I will give Magic some credit here. Uh, he mentioned this was a homebred for Catalano and for, or for Coffee Pot Stables. They sold all of the siblings, but chose to keep this horse which often is a, a tell that uh, the horse is going to be something. Magic uh, found that up when he was doing our research. He's the research guy. I'm just the pretty face. Uh, so that's how uh, that's how we get this thing done. And yeah, I, we're, we're excited about having a Wayne Catalano. No one else has one. We're not taking a Baffert. Come on, get original guys. Quit taking Baffert. <laughs> this is three years running. We haven't taken a Baffert horse. And before we go, Aaron, I just want you to know, Mrs. Magic is watching this show live and she did not appreciate what you said one bit. Hey, I didn't say it. So she heard you. Hey, whatever. She, it's, it's all implied. I didn't say a word. I said, oh, I had a, mag uh, a Mrs. Magic joke. She doesn't know what it was. She might be a joke writer, but she's not a joke predictor. She doesn't know what I was going to say. Well, she also, <laughs> in that case, you know, if you had said a joke, that probably would have worked a little bit better for her, too. Shoot. Sorry. There's a lot of violence in Los Angeles. Violence. I... I, I, I don't know if he's being serious, but I, I guess he's getting shot at. I, I really don't know. He's he's very uh, confusing tonight. So we're just going to move on. Uh, we're going to go to the 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 uh, Dan and Michael Myers team here with a 39th pick. All right, here we go. All right, we are going with – I'm a little worried he's going to be heading to the turf, but – we're going to go with Wolfie's Dyna Ghost out of Ghost Zapper and a Dyna Former Mare. One on debut at seven furlongs. Okay. I, I got to be honest. This was not one I uh, had in my top 330,000. So tell me a little bit about this horse and why you're going to draft him here at 39. Can I interrupt uh, for just a second? A uh, sure, uh, producer please. note, because uh, I've never heard of this horse either. How do you spell his name? It's W O L. F I E apostrophe S Dyna Ghost. Good luck. <laughs> All right, explain. <laughs> um, Dan convinced me of this. It's also the fourth round, and instead of picking an unnamed hip horse uh, like somebody did last year, we'll go with somebody who at least won on debut, take it at 33 to 1. But Ghost Zapper, Dyna Farmer is going to want distance. Um, Junior Alvarado hopped on him the first time, so I must have saw something, and obviously he did. Uh, he won, at, and, and debuting at seven furlongs, I think, is uh, is important. So, so really, a roundabout way, you're saying this was the token Dan pick. <clears throat> I plead the fifth. <laughs> That's good enough. That's a perfect answer. All right, Michael, we'll see you one more time here in just a second. Uh, thanks for that. That was a great answer because. Uh, only Dan and Real Dynasty, when they draft hip 
406 drafts a horse and it's like, I haven't even heard of that horse. Uh, so, uh, all right. So we're going to go back to, uh, listen, admittedly, my favorite team, the John and Ryan team with the 40 and 41st pick. With the 40th pick, the Ryan John team, not only because we like the name, but there are other aspects that we like of a, of a cult by the name of Laker Mamba. Laker Mamba, owned by Gary Berber, trained by Mark Cassie. This is a son of Nyquist. And we had good luck in this draft in the past with a similar horse by the name of War of Will. And uh, the way we feel good about this pick at number 40, who was the number four pick in the 2021 draft? It was Keep me in mind. Well, when uh, Laker Mamba ran on the dirt in his career debut going a mile at four to one odds, who did he finish? Less than two lengths behind, a length and three quarters. Keep me in mind. So keep me in mind was the number five pick. We're getting this guy who finished right behind him with the 40th pick. And he came back after that maiden race and romped on the turf. So there's plenty of stamina here. And uh, so there's real upside, and we think that this guy could make some real noise in New Orleans, where during Mardi Gras you get a lot of noise. So our final pick, the 41st pick in the draft, back to the Bob Baffert barn we shall go. And we will go with an unstarted horse. Now, he does have a name. So this isn't one of these uh, draft picks that uh, the horse doesn't have a name. In fact, one of these years, I'm expecting that in this draft, we'll get a horse that wasn't even born yet drafted, perhaps. <laughs> but uh, we're going to take a horse by the name of Concert Tour. C-O-N-C-E-R-T-T-O-U-R. Concert Tour, a son of Street Sands out of a Tappet Mare. And uh, he has not raced yet, but he's been working out at Los Alamitos. He started off at Los Alamitos, then worked at Del Mar, worked at Los Alamitos, and then got a little feel of the track at Santa Anita this week. So um, we'll cross our fingers that this is one of those Baffert uh, horses that hasn't raced yet that could burst on the scene and and help us uh, in this league. So, again, it was a great honor to draft first in this league. It was pressure, but, uh, you know, Ryan almost uh, fainted with all the pressure. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I freaking love John White and I love Ryan Stillman. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Guys, stay on though. We'll, we'll go back at the very end and you can kind of recap the, your, your team for a couple seconds if you want to stay on and do that. Ryan. Um, I have no life, so I'll definitely be staying on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, you guys hang in there uh, and, and we'll, we'll hit you back here in just a second. Uh, that's John and Ryan with their last two picks. All right, we're going to get Dan and Michael Myers' last pick. Uh, they shocked the world last time out with uh, Wolfie's Dyna Ghost. Uh, I don't know. So 42, here we go. All right. All right. Well, I just got scared, so it kind of made my pick when he said an unraised Baffert horse. And I'm kind of between... 10 for 10, but he doesn't seem to like to win as a two-year-old, so I don't trust that. And there is an unraced Pletcher horse racing this Saturday named Amount. But $2.5 million to Dolphin, Tappet, Baffert. We're going to go with Lidstrom. Okay, I'm, I'm behind you on this pick because he definitely was in my fifth-round realm here so yeah i think that's a good one uh jared also was really wanting that horse as well so uh you know i think a lot of people see the purchase price and, and see that breeding and think yeah so 42nd pick you're gonna go with lidstrom uh like i told john and ryan if you want hang on for a second and we'll bring you in after it's all over and just do a quick recap and, and what you think so uh if you want to stick around we'll see you here in just a second all right Okay, we'll move to the 43rd pick. Thank God it's the last pick for the Magic Mike show. Not because I don't love them, just because I don't know what the hell they're going to do or what they're even talking about tonight. I think they're both high. So 43rd pick. I don't know who's coming in, but we'll see what happens. Who am I getting? Hey, it's me. No, you get Magic too. <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> Can I get a this is the this is the first time <coughs> we really struggled with a pick. We have three different horses that we like by three trainers that we hate, and so it was a very difficult choice. And by by we, I mean me, choice of which we weren't going to actually go for. So now, based on the horse that we picked, you'll know who won the argument here. Aaron. So Magic, you wanted to reveal the uh, the future Triple Crown winner. Yo, 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 so happy to be on the Wasting Dudes podcast, <laughs> doing another fantasy league. Hang on a second. <laughs> okay, so. So, here's what we're going to do. There was a horse who was a really impressive debut winner. And I thought to myself, this is a horse that I really want to draft. His name is Stan Out. Late, I would show you my Steve Assman bobblehead that I have, <laughs> but I keep that baby under lock and key in a safe. Not the other bobbleheads, those are out to play. So, we're taking. <sighs> Staying out late. Daily double, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the 50th pick in the draft and now to see Slim's reaction. To this stupidity slash hilariousness of Ratchet. Ho, 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 even though I don't celebrate Christmas, it's a Gentile <laughs> holiday. <laughs> oh, that's hey, great. can I tell you guys about this horse I like? His name is Turbulator. <laughs> no, in all honesty, uh, this horse reminded us of uh, Tacitus, so we thought we had to take him. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys are done. I'll see you back here in a minute. We'll wrap up your team. Uh, that's That may have been the funniest thing of the night. So I think he said staying out late is who he wants at 43. Vinny, you got to follow up this stupidity one more time. So, Vinny, you're coming up. Okay, let's see. Vinny's last pick. Can he get off mute right at the start? That's going to be the challenge. Vinny at 44. Let's see. I'm off mute. He's done I'm it. Off mute. I, I got it. I got it this time. Um, yeah. So kind of, kind of mad at John for taking Laker Mamba. I had my Kobe jersey all ready to take that horse in the last round. I didn't think anybody was going to take a Mark Cassie <laughs> horse here. So kind of ups, kind of upset there. But I am going to take a horse who recently broke his maiden as of twelve nineteen. Or sorry, he won his second race on twelve nineteen. A uh, a Godolphin horse named Proxy. Trained by uh, Mike, it's uh, Michael St- uh, Stidham. Uh, won an allowance race at Fairgrounds on the 19th. So that's going to be my last pick because I couldn't get Laker Mamba. <laughs> well, you know, you got a horse that just won, like you said. A couple yeah, of not, the wor- not the worst. I was between three horses, so John kind of made it easier on me. Well, there you go. That's that's why John joined today, <laughs> to make it easier on the Real Dynasty team. I think that's why we all joined. So <laughs> we all right, Vinny, st- stick around. We'll bring you on one more time uh, at the end. So Real Dynasty takes Proxy at 44. Uh, it's back to me at 45. I'm shocked I'm going to get this horse. I am completely shocked that Rombauer, Rombauer is still here at 45. I had him rank 17 overall. Uh, I, I, I magic says Rom Donkey. Uh, Rom Bauer is gonna be my pick at forty-five. Uh, you know, got got a pedigree that says he's probably gonna be okay going long. Fifth last time out uh, in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, obviously a very tough race. So hopefully that is a strong race and not a weak race like last year where nobody came out of it to do anything. Um, you know, I know Michael McCarthy's pretty high on this horse. He has been for a while. And, you know, he has a recent work, which tells me we're building back up. We're going to get on the trail. And that's, I mean, that's that's half the battle of this league. So Ron Bauer for me at 45. My good buddy, Evil Stevel at 46. He's coming back for one last pick. All right. First things first, Aaron, I want to apologize to the guys on the Magic Mike show for the mispronunciation earlier. It is violence. (laughs) As somebody who has watched every episode and just to make things up for them, I'm going to hold up the shirt, the one and only. So 
Love the Magic Mike show. And once again, we thought about going Baffert, but it's probably not the best choice. So, um, you know, we're going to go a little bit something different here and go with Manor House. Uh, another Michael Stidham trainee, um, one big out at Laurel. Uh, they're moving him over to the fairgrounds for the prep races there, um, you know, and out of upstart. So should, should be able to get the distance. So we're going to go with Manor House. All right, Manor House. Yeah, that's definitely one uh, I had an eye on as well. I think that's a pretty good pick. And again, you're trying to take a stab, and this is definitely one that I think can get the distance as well. So Manor House goes to 46. Eva, we'll see you in just a second when we complete this. We got four picks left. The Killer Bees, Mr. Cleveland Brown is coming up next. We got to have some Browns talk before you make this pick. All right, take it away. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I need to say anything other than go Browns, really, do I, at this point? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean, the, the Colts are going to win this weekend, and the Browns are going to be playing for the championship. So, Dude, I hope you're right about that. And honestly, if that happens, I, the Browns should be favored to beat the Steelers. The Steelers have looked awful. So, fingers crossed. We'll, we'll see what happens with some of the O-line injuries, but let, let's yeah. – uh, fingers crossed to the point. Um, I, I just, I guess I have one other question. Why is Magic dressed as a character from Wolf of Wall Street? I don't understand. <laughs> I didn't, I was trying to put that all together, like 80s banker magic. I'm, I thought it was it ironic or? I, I don't know. I don't know anything Magic has done all night tonight. I'm very <laughs> confused by, by his whole stick. I mean, that last part was pretty funny. I'll give him that. But he's, he's a very confusing person tonight. There we go. So, so Brandon and I had a lot of conversations about this and, you know, we could have gone with a, a lucky Pete trainee. We could have gone with a bad luck Bob trainee, but we really decided that we were trying to break the scoring model right now. So we went with lemon pop cause we're going to grind out some points in Japan. And so we are going to go with golden pal and we are going to grind out some guaranteed points on the turf and hope for some dirt. Golden pal, the breeders cup turf sprint winner that's not two words you like to say back to back when drafting for a triple crown fantasy draft so golden pal just just trying to rack up those 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 20, little minor awards we'll take 20 points at our five at our five spot and then trade out there you go all right that's that's that sums it up uh i don't know if you or brandon will be back for the summary but um hopefully it's you so we can talk browns again but Hey, we'll see. So 47 Golden Pal. I definitely didn't think that horse would get drafted. He might be the most talented horse in the draft, though. So it was 40, the best horse remaining on the board. There's there's absolutely no question from a talent standpoint. That is 1000 percent true. So I do agree with that. So Golden Pal, 47. OK, so. All right. We're going to move on to Jared. His last pick at 48. He's got another first time starter that he's pretty high on for 48. All right, Jared's going first time starter this time on the West Coast. I'm going to assume Bob Baffert has this horse. Gary and Mary West, the breeder. Uh, this is a Curlin Colt uh, class reunion is who he is going to take at 48. Class reunion, um, you know, solid workouts at Santa Anita from the gate the last three times. So on the 4th, the 11th, and the 19th of December. So this horse is getting close to a race, class reunion, 48 for Jared. We'll kick it to Paul for the 49th pick. You know, honestly, Aaron, I thought uh, Jared's last pick there would actually be uh, Peter Miller's uh, get her number, uh, <laughs> but uh, it wasn't. So I'm not going to take the horse either because I'm going to leave that up to uh, to, to Jared to, to do that. But uh I will go back to uh, Pletcher. I'm going to take a horse that uh, um, has already proven around uh, two turns, uh, has had the uh, ultimate uh, equipment change um, already taken care of, so no concerns there. We'll take uh, Donegal Bay. Uh, Donegal Bay. I think that one's been drafted. Yeah, Jared already drafted Donegal Bay at 33, so try again. And, and, we, and we won't take him. <laughs> um, I'm going to take um, a, a a horse that uh, has uh, uh, recently broke its uh, maiden in uh, Beep Beep. 
Beep beep. I love the source's name. Is it is it a name play only for you? Uh, you know, it's uh, it. I had it ranked, uh, you know, in the twenties uh, on my list. So uh, you know, I do like the sire. Obviously, we just uh, recently lost a sire, uh, sire of uh, uh, Monomoy Girl. So had some success around two turns on the Philly side, but uh, we'll see if we can have some success uh, on the Colt side and see how far down the Derby Trail it wants to go. All right, Beep Beep at 49. Uh, Heather was watching the day that Beep Beep won, and we were really getting a kick out of the announcer calling the race. <laughs> so, um, all right, Paul, we'll bring you back here just a second for the recap. Listen, Slim's got to be sitting over there pissed right now. He's ready to kill Magic. So this this could be the most entertaining 50th pick ever. Yeah, check this out. I don't even sweat fucking magic, all right? He's a fucking dork, and that's all I got for him. So you could beep that out of the podcast. <laughs> I love it, Slim. I love it. That's how I really feel about him. <laughs> Everything I've done for him, he got a job with this website, man. He was like, he came to me, he was like, oh, I want to write for a website. And I like took him under my wing. And now he got a full-time job and shit. That kid... Whatever, man. <laughs> I thought he was cool with me. Whatever, yo. I got nothing for him. So check this shit out. This is a crazy pick. The 50th pick. I was thinking about picking Lidstrom. And I was like, oh, man, I'm going to pick up Unraced Baffert. But I think that's been done a lot. So what's crazy at the 50th pick, and this is no secret to anyone that's following this, there are three grade one winners still available. <laughs> in the draft and people picking beep beep and fucking <laughs> regular guy who are these horses these three grade one winners that haven't been picked yet so i'm gonna have my choice of these three grade one winners this is no joke like people know these horses are gonna come back so i'm not like giving up some horse that was just born at a songbird yesterday that's gonna be on the trail or some shit that you guys are asking backside workers that their shits smell good so <laughs> There's three grade one winners, so I got my choice. It's get her numbered American Farrell winner. I think that's a great one. Mm -hmm. And Fire at Will, mm -hmm. who won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. That's a great one. And Dr. Scheivel won the Delmar Futurity. So I got to pick one of these three. It's very difficult. So Dr. Scheivel's a horse that took off, just like Instagram. Instagram, it took two years ago in the first round, effed me hard. Then I got Fire Will, who I took in the first round last year. Structor won the Breeders Cup Juvenile Turf also. F me hard. <laughs> and then I got <laughs> her number, which I really don't know about this horse. He beat Spielberg a bunch of times, and Spielberg is garbage. <laughs> so it's either Fire Will or Dr. Shive. So, Aaron, who do you think I should pick? <laughs> <laughs> um... I, I would not pick Dr. Scheibel just because I'm not confident that horse will be back. Um, yeah. Get her number I was definitely thinking about, but I didn't see any recent work, so I was a little worried about him. Uh, a fire of will would be who I would pick here at 50, Slim. I also have a Pletcher that I like. <laughs> I'm going to pick the Pletcher. Screw those three grade one winners because everyone else screwed at those three grade one ones. So I'm going to pick the Pletcher because I got a Mott. I got a Cox, I got a Baffert, I got a Brown, and I need a Pletcher. So I'm going to pick the third place finisher in my favorite race, the Remsen. No one agenda. Curlin will mature. I'm going to go Pletcher to finish the draft. No one agenda. That horse, uh, I don't know about that horse, man. I don't know. He looks like it. He looks pretty slow to me. <laughs> Do you yeah. need a Pletcher? So. <laughs> I needed a Pletcher. All right. All right. So with the 50th pick, Slim is going to go known agenda. Um, just I'm going to bring some people back just one at a time. If anybody has any mind left, uh, we're going to do it quick, real quick, a couple, couple minutes. So Ryan and John, I'll bring you guys in first. Just kind of sum up uh, your thoughts. Well, what I want to know, uh, representing the uh, Ryan John team, is can we still uh, – Draft Donegal Day. We'd like to draft Donegal Day. <laughs> no, and I don't think you can draft known agenda either. 
Uh, uh, to me, the, uh, I want to congratulate the Evil Austin team. I think maybe the best pick in the draft for where the horse was picked is Manor House at 46. I think that is an absolutely outstanding pick. And uh, so I want to congratulate them for that selection. Uh, we feel good about our team. Uh, you know, especially we got the, the very good luck of the number one pick. And so we're just hoping that, that based on the five horses we took, that uh, for the Ryan John team, life is good. <laughs> Yep, that's a good way to sum it up, no doubt about it. Uh, Ryan, any any last thoughts? It's an honor to play in the league. It's an honor to play with a person that's, you know, been a mentor and a great friend. And, I mean, John White is a legend. And uh, thanks for having us again this year. And uh, let's just hope all the horses stay safe and sound, go racing, and let's have a less crazy 2021 and this league doesn't go till December. So those are my <laughs> words on that. <laughs> it does go to December I may jump off a cliff, so <laughs> I will root for that as well. John Ryan, thanks so much. Good luck to you guys. Uh, that life is good. He's, he's a pretty good horse. So, all right, that is John and Ryan. I don't think we have uh, Dan and Michael anymore, so I will always kind of speak for them. I thought they would improve. I don't know what the hell they were doing. That was a terrible draft for them. All right, so Real Dynasty, <laughs> we're going to bring hey. Vinny. I'm going to oh, jump go in real quick. Uh, Dan, so Mike had to leave. Dan is uh, was waiting for Ryan to get out of the room, which he did. So Dan should be here any second. So if you want to move on to the next one, and we'll just circle back to Dan at the end. No, let's, no. I think Dan is here right now. So go ahead and bring him in if he's ready. There he is. Hey, Dan. So if you want to move on. To Whoops. Dan's gone. So, okay. He, we'll, he, yeah, we'll come back to him. He was on a delay and it, it booted him out there too. Okay, yeah. just We'll, we'll come back to him uh, last. Uh, let's go to Real Dynasty and uh, let's bring in Vinny. Vinny, uh, I think we're going to bring in Vinny. Where is Vinny? There he is. All right, Vinny, you're off mute. What do you think? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with our team, actually, uh, considering that we didn't get one of the top two. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very happy with our team, actually. Yeah, I think so, you guys. Uh, I think you guys had a good strategy, uh, and and I think that does happen a lot when you try to go all in on a lot of different kind of unproven horses. You kind of need a mix, and I, I like what you did too. So I think it was good. Yeah, hopefully we do. Hopefully we do a little bit better than we did last year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you didn't finish last, so that's no. Right. We didn't all finish. Right. Last. That's the goal every year. That's the goal. Just don't finish mm -hmm. last. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Vinny. Thank cool. you for coming on thank here. You. Good luck this year. Um, hate to do it, but it's Magic Mike's turn to come in and, and talk about how they did <laughs> Magic. Or Mike has now got a Christmas sweater on. All right, Magic Mike, what do, you, what do you guys think of your team? Honestly, our big thing was we wanted Prime Factor at three. We knew we weren't getting Life is Good. We knew we weren't getting Essential Quality. After the first, like, five horses, the rest of this draft is shit. So we wanted to make sure that we got one of our top picks early. So we were happy to trade up and be able to get Prime Factor at three. We're excited to have him on the team. And then it's just all about stabbing. I mean, you look at like all these un, uh, unraced Bafferts that got taken, all of these unraced horses that got taken, these horses that haven't break, broken their maiden. We've talked about it on the Magic Mike show. We haven't seen the best three-year-old most likely on the track yet. Um, so it's, it's all about taking stabs, trying to accumulate points. And we were happy to be able to get one of what we felt was a clear top three in this year's class that we've seen, and that's Prime Factor. Yeah, you know, you traded up and you got who you wanted. So, Magic, what do you think? <laughs> well, howdy there, little lady. Uh, I was gonna keep you on the rails. I can't thought help. this was fun. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, sorry, I, I didn't have any prepared. Mike said that he was switching to the Christmas sweater, and I wasn't ready, so I didn't. I didn't have a character. Um, I want to first apologize to Paul. Uh, Paul might be a little upset about the, how the Prime Factor uh, situation went down. Um, I did promise. That was a Paul very coveted they, pick, by the way. There were multiple people trying to trade Vinny for that pick. That's why we ended up trading for it. Uh, I did promise Paul that if Prime Factor was available at four, that I would trade with him. So notice we took him at three. Um, <laughs> nothing like uh, John White coming in with a fifth round pick with a Baffert that hasn't started yet to scare the ever living shit out of the rest of us. So that's going to be fun finishing yeah. second or third to him I, again. Uh, raise uh, your hand if you already checked offshore books for odds on that horse to win the Derby. <laughs> Swear to God, yeah. yeah. Okay. As soon as he said it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah seriously, yeah. like if you guys, if you're if you're listening or you're watching this, uh, yeah. stable up concert tour because that's probably going to be a monster. Um, yeah. This was, I will say, uh, the teams that um, had to uh, learn and develop from last season, from their two year old, three year old season, they did a great job here, uh, especially Evil Austin. You guys. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm not going to lie. I thought your draft was absolute shit last year when it happened. Um, <laughs> you guys did a good job here. I that I see where you're going with the three Bafferts, uh, just throwing darts. Hey, everybody from fourth pick down or fifth pick down was throwing darts. So I don't blame you on that one. But uh, you guys did some good ones. But everybody, I thought this was a really even draft. No, I agree. Yeah, I thought it was good. Well, I don't know. We'll 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 get Wise Dan's thoughts here in a second. I thought they it wasn't a great draft for them, but uh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, um, Magic, uh, see you here in just a second. You're gonna you're gonna help me in the show, so we'll we'll, we'll pull you back in one more time. But uh, Samich, thanks for coming on as always. Love the Christmas sweaters. That was great, guys. Uh, my turn to talk about my team. Listen, I think it's pretty good. I I, I really do. I, I don't know if it's a championship type team, but I think it's solid. Uh, there's a lot of horses I can work with. And if I need to drop a couple, I think I'm going to earn some points. So, I, you know, listen, it, it went as well as, as it could for me. Uh, I'm happy. Listen, let's let's now go to a team that, that they're getting a lot of attention. The the Austin and Evil Stevel group here. Uh, let's let's bring Steve in here. Listen, you, you guys are getting bragged on a lot. You know, John White, Magic. So how do you feel? Um, well, first of all, coming – Taking that compliment from John White, I mean, you, you're getting a compliment from a living legend there. Uh, that, that's probably the the best I've heard all all, all night. So uh, thank you, John. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're we're taking a stab with the the Bafferts um, with with the connections there of Madikit and Starlight and SF. So you, you've got some pretty strong connections, and you figure one of those three hopefully will hit. Um, and then you know you go out east with Pletcher um, and, and Rapoli with Prisoner. Uh, and hoping he can get you some points down in uh, Gulfstream. And then you come back to the fairgrounds uh, with Manor House, who had a big win out at Laurel, and um, see what he does on the on the fairgrounds chill down there. So uh, um, I don't know. We felt good about our, our draft last year, and it didn't turn out worth shit. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens this year. But uh, uh, we'll be happy if we just don't finish last. Yeah, yeah. Let's get you in the positives. That's, that's definitely a thing. Let's that's win a race. Yeah, that's right. That's right. No, I thought it. I thought you guys did well as well. I, I like I said, I, 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 yeah, I get what you're doing too with the Bafferts. One of them's got to come through, uh, and and knowing him, there might be a couple that come through. So, all right, Evil, thanks for coming on. Love your team. Uh, good luck this year, man. Hopefully, you do not finish last two years in a row. Um, all right, let's kick it to the Killer Bees. I think we got them both. Yes, I see them both. The Killer Bees bringing them on, Brian and Brandon. What do you guys think? Looks like Brian might be muted, so I'll start off. So we went with a little bit of a different strategy here this year. What I've done the last couple of years is I've taken a shot, and I hope that every single horse is going to win the Triple Crown. Um, and so what I did this year is there was only a handful of horses I liked, and we talked about this a lot. We went for horses that were going to get points. We've got lots of horses that can get points early that are going to be competitive in races. They're going to run a lot. And it's also horses that we're not that attached to. So when the Triple Crown runner, Kentucky Derby uh, winner, shows up here in a maiden in a couple of weeks, we're going to be ready to drop that, make the claim, and get that horse uh, early. And I think that we're really well set up to get the points. Uh, we might have a couple gems in our batch, and if not, we're ready to pick up the gem as uh, he starts off early off this year. I like right. this strategy of drafting horses ready to drop them at a drop at the drop of the hat. So that's good. Yeah. All right, Brian, what do you, what do you think of your team? I mean, listen, we're either going to win by five points or not get last by five points. And it will be because we took golden pal and lemon drop. So our, our strategy is flawless from that perspective. <laughs> oh, I love it. No, that's great. No, I, I love it. I thought you guys, uh, you know, worked well together. You were the only team that got the concept to rotate. Yeah, so congratulations to you two on following directions and knowing how to do that. That's because we can both read. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's congratulations to you both. Thank you both for coming on. Uh, Brian, really glad that you are a part of it this year. So that's exciting. Uh, Jared, it's kind of his turn to talk next. Listen, I thought he had a good draft. Uh, I really did. Uh, you know, highly motivated and hot rod Charlie are, are point getters. Uh, I, I really think uh, <laughs> there's Jared's comment about his his team, but I thought it was all right. He got a couple of first times or a couple of uh, uh, horses haven't started yet. That's not the worst thing in the world. And he got Dungal Bay, who who is kind of an up and comer as well. So I thought he had a good mix. I, I like Jared's team. Um, we're going to attempt to bring Dan on. I see him now. He can make a comment for the Dan and Michael Meyer team. Dan, 
What's up, man? Hey, how's it going? Good, man. So what do you think? I'm actually really happy with our team. Very happy. How, why? <laughs> well, Central Quality, he was he was one of the top two horses. Um, okay. I really yep. like Editor-in-Chief out of Baffert. So I'm not a Baffert fan. You guys know that. Um, but I really like Editor-in-Chief. He's a curlin. He's also by Taffet in there. I think he's well-bred. I think he ran well for his first race. And he, he's going to get better with the distance. You know, he might not win one of these, you know, 20-point races, but he might win the 100-point races and then build himself into points in for the for the Derby. I think he's he's a horse that's going to improve. The older he gets, he's, he's going to get better. More time. So he's. I was really happy to get him with the second pick. And uh, Wolfie's dying ghost, he's going to go to Florida. They're, they already decided they're going to ship him to Florida and run in those races. So we got kind of like the Florida circuit covered. You know, he might be able to get in, get some bits and pieces, and maybe even win a few of those races there. You know, I don't know. Well, I, I I'll say this. I obviously I love your first pick. And the second pick, I think you took him a little high, but still I like that horse. I, that was one I was looking to draft. I thought the wheels fall <laughs> fell off three, four, and five. So let's see what happens. If you can yeah. hit a hit a home run with somebody in that three, four, five round, it, it could be a pretty decent team. And listen, you made strides. I mean, you picked up Swiss Skydiver. Nobody wanted Swiss Skydiver last year. Yeah. You won the Preakness with her. So uh, you made strides last year, so so maybe I'm being a bit hard on you. Uh, I, I got to be honest, I forgot you got essential quality. I, I totally that link. That was too long ago. So, um, all right, Dan, glad you got to come on. Uh, good luck to you and Michael. Good Myers. luck to you too. Uh, yep. Right. So uh, we're excited. Um, all right, two more left. Paul, we'll bring you in real quick. Thoughts on your team and uh, and what's going on this year. Well, well, the first thing I want to say is uh, I just want to quickly talk about Donegal Bay. In my defense, who would have thought a guy that just got a year-long subscription to Tender Gold would have selected a gelding? Um, so th we'll just put that out there. But, uh, you know, um, it, my team is a, is a lot of uh, uh, swings, you know, uh, big swings. You're, you're hoping one uh, crushes it over the fence. Uh, there's seven total starts amongst the, the five horses that I drafted. Uh, so a lot of uh, uh, hope, a lot of promise there. It, all you really need is just one of them to to connect, and uh, and it can take you uh, pretty deep in the league. So we'll see. Uh, like I said, a lot of uh, a lot of unknown. You know, twenty twenty pushed a lot of uh, training back for a lot of these horses. You know, by now most of these horses would have had a couple of starts um, under their belt, but uh, twenty twenty really uh, not only screwed with the three year olds on the Kentucky Derby Trail this year but the two-year-olds that uh, are going to be on the trail next year. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I think that's what made it so tough uh, this year. You know, like we kept saying, just to try to get somebody that's going to earn points and they can just go one way or the other at this point. And usually they're at this this stage in like October, like you mentioned, and not right here on draft night. So, uh, Paul, as always, thanks for coming over. Or thanks for coming over. Thanks for coming on and drafting uh, tonight. I feel like you're the voice of reason, you and John White, voice of reason of the group. So it's it's always good to have that. Well, any comparison to John White, I'll take because he's a legend. <laughs> yep, that's exactly right. I mean, I think he made Evil Steve's year. All right, we got to bring in uh, Slim to round this out. He, he gets the final word. Uh, he, he got the worst of it as far as the draft position. I think he has a pretty decent team lined up here. Let's bring in Slim and get his final thoughts. Hello, everyone. You know, I get crazy when I speak, but it's all my shtick. But deep down, you know, I love the Kentucky Derby. I love this draft. I'm the one who started this all in back in 2015 yep. when there was just Aaron and Jarrett picking. So, and I sent them picks and then I kept my own team and I beat them that year because they didn't pick exaggerated, which was ridiculous. That's why I did it. So that's how this all started. But, you know, you know, it's great to be with the dudes doing this. Uh, it's such a fun time. And we've grown the group over the last many years here. And to have all these guys chilling with us and having a fun time when we're all stuck in our damn houses during this ridiculous year, that's all that matters, that we're having fun and that people are watching. And we have this group of friends that we've made together. So love you guys. My team and, you know, really uh, some really good points. Samich made a really good point before about 
you know, after the top three picks, you're just taking stabs. So I just really took a bunch of stabs this year because, as Paul said, two-year-olds really, you know, there was no Samford this year. The whole race has been run for like 120 years. They didn't even fucking have it, you know. So this is what happened this year. The two-year-olds got a late start. You don't really know. It's really taking a stab. So I went with some horses that have run a few times each, and hopefully they develop. I just wanted good trainers. So with Speaker's Corner, I got Mott. Cado River, I got Cox. Seville Row, I got Baffert. Risk Taken, I got Brown. No one agenda, I got Pletcher. You know, if you look at Mott, Cox, Baffert, Brown, and Pletcher, they're each going to have at least one good horse to make the gate. You know, if, if you took a bet right now that all five of those trainers wouldn't have one horse in the gate for the Kentucky Derby, that would be that would be pretty. Those five should get a horse in. They have so many good prospects. So I'm just hoping the horse I got is their best horse. So we'll see what happens. Uh, it's going to be tough. But, uh, you know, I just went with pedigrees. My horses are side by Street Sense, Hard Spun, Quality Road, Medaglia, Dora, and Curlin. So those are all distance pedigrees. I just want to go with distance pedigrees and good trainers, and hopefully something hits. As it's really just throwing darts against the board. No, I mean, you're right. And, and, and like I said, you went trainers, you went pedigree. You can't go wrong with that. Slim, man, thanks for coming on again. As always, you were the star. Magic tried to like to overdo it, but you are the star. Yes, that's exactly right. I was going to say he overdid it. Just took a little. Yep, because you've got the natural. <laughs> he just took Slim off. Slim has the natural talent. All right. All right, Magic. Go ahead and hop on. We'll finish this up. Put a bow on it. Uh, man, I... I'm exhausted, Magic. <laughs> yeah, we were uh, we we had a couple um, uh, a couple of production calls in the last couple of days just to talk about things, and we've had so much excitement. And I woke up without an alarm at 5:30 because I was excited, and uh, I tried to go lie down in the middle of the afternoon because I was starting to my initial excitement. Hey, kind of started to do this. I was like, I'll take a nap, and then I thought for two seconds about the draft, and then uh, you know back out six to midnight again. So. Um, yeah, this was this was fun. This was I think this is the best one. It's too bad the jury couldn't be here because I think this is the best overall one that, that you guys have had since you started this. And and like Slim said, it was just the two of you. So um yeah, this was this was great. Thank you to all the teams. I'm happy that we were able to add that you found ways to add people here because they're all great personalities. Um when you added Brian and Michael, I texted you and I said, That's a great idea. This league just got harder. So uh <laughs> having them on board. Uh, is going to make things harder for all of us, but that makes us all better. And ultimately, we can you know give a better product to the the fans and everybody who wants to know who's the next three year old to watch. Yeah, and I think you know for people who always are kind of like, well, why do I need to care about this? I'm, you don't need to care about it from a standpoint of who's winning the league, right. who's losing the league. But when John White takes concert tour at forty one, that's something that's very valuable, and that's why we do this. So. Uh, I'm glad there's always an example of that that pops up. And that's, again, that's exactly why we do it. Um, yeah, the, listen, I, I'm with you. I, you know, today was the debut of the Rocket Hour. And I, I put a lot of energy and kind of time thinking about that show and, 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 and prepping for that show more than I do for like Blinkers Off or when I come on Magic Mike, only because I know exactly what to expect. They're established shows. We know what's going to happen. We know, you know, I know how to play off Samich. I know how to play off you. So, you know, of course, Jared and I know how to play off each other. We have that. Ricky and I had never really done a show together, and Ricky had mm -hmm. never done a standalone show, period. So I didn't know what to expect. Uh, he did a great job. I didn't need to prepare as much as I did because he, he, he knocked it out of the park for his first show. He did great. But still, that added to the stress of the day and then trying to – Put this all together, but I'm glad you said that you thought it worked well. I thought it did too. Um, no major issues, so that's good. Let's put a bow on it. We've been on yeah. for an hour and 45 minutes almost. Magic, any final thoughts? And then I am going to say the final word, and we're going to get the hell out of here. Uh, well, Slim gets the last laugh because he had not one, not two, not three, but four F-bombs that I now have to go out, uh, edit out of this. So Slim gets the last laugh because uh, my night just got about 10 minutes longer. So thank you for that, Slim. Um, uh, that's, uh, you know, the, the fans that, that were able to watch live and comment, you guys were fun. Uh, I'm excited. This, Like I said the last time I spoke, this is going to be hard, but I am so excited for it. And that's what she said. 
that uh, this Nick Seavers man, that that right there might mean more than any compliment ever in the history that I've ever gotten, just because of the work that Magic and I put into it. And uh, to be fair, I sh I should also definitely give a shout out to Jared. He made those yes. videos uh, that we that we played, like the Baffert. Uh, when he would come in for the pick and then the opening thing. So Jared deserves credit as well. A lot of planning went into it. So thank you for saying that. I'm really glad and happy that you feel that way. All right. That being said, I'm sick of everybody. So <laughs> uh, we're going to hang out of here. I I'm not sick of the fans, uh, by the way. I love you guys. Thank you so much if you tuned in, even for a couple of seconds. Uh, really appreciate it. Really appreciate everybody that participated tonight. So much fun for all of us here at Racing Dudes. This is the last bit of content you're going to get before Christmas. So have a great rest of your Festivus. Have a great Christmas Eve. Have a great Christmas Day, even you, Slimmy. All right, so for the dudes, I am Aaron. He was magic. He's gone now. I don't really know what Jared says about Twitter, Facebook. You know where to find us by now. You know if you're going to listen to the podcast, hell, you know where to go. So for all of us at Racing Dudes, have a great holiday season. We'll probably see you back on Saturday for a live show. Good night, everybody, and we will see you soon.